basics. The greatest aspect of the CTX5000's appeal is its sound quality. The AIX sound source is used for the core of this keyboard, which is capable of a rich range of expression from powerful low tones and clear high tones. And the keyboard offers a multitude of options with its 800 preset tones, which span everything from standard tones to synthesized sounds. Let's press the tone button and select a tone while looking at the LCD. You can adjust the contrast of the LCD as necessary for easier viewing. For details about how to adjust the LCD contrast, see Chapter 7. Press the tone button, and when the tone indicator in the LCD area lights up, you can select a tone. The tone number is shown on the left, and the name of the tone appears next. Use the plus and minus buttons in the numeric keypad area, or the jog dial. to select the number of tone that you want to perform on the keyboard. If the number indicator is lit up, you can also enter the number of the tone. Now, we'll introduce some of the tones contained in the keyboard. First, let's produce a piano sound. You can perceive a pleasant change in the characteristics of the tone depending on the strength with which you strike a key from weak to strong. Next, we'll hear an electric piano sound. The gorgeous Galaxia EP as well as many other representative electric piano tones. Here's a sax. The keyboard includes the waveforms for reproducing a natural vibrato, giving players the ability to create natural performances by using any part of the keyboard. The acoustic guitar sounds. are extremely realistic, incorporating details such as fret noise and hammering. And the electric guitar sounds. Feature a number of powerful effects that go well with pitch bending playing. The included synthesizers. are composed of various sounds processed from the waveforms contained in memory. Lastly, the strings. Have a high quality sound that is rich and expansive. In addition to these, the keyboard has many more appealing tones built in. Next, we will introduce the transpose function. You can use the transpose function to raise or lower the pitches of the entire keyboard by half steps. This function comes in handy when you need to raise or lower the key of your accompaniment to match a singer's vocal range. Pressing up or down on the transpose button will display trance.
when your changes have been applied, the transpose indicator in the LCD area will light up. Pressing the function button or not performing any operations for some time will automatically remove the effect of the transpose function. Now let's take a look at the split function. The split function is used to divide the left and right sides of the keyboard into two different tones during performance. To split the left and right into two tones, verify that the display of the keyboard part indicator in the upper left part of the LCD area looks like this, and then select a tone for the upper one part. Next, press the split button. The L1 indicator lights up, and at the same time, this arrow moves to the right of L1. Now select the tone to assign to the lower one part. To select a different tone for the upper one part, press and hold the tone button until the arrow to the right of the keyboard part indicator moves. Repeat this operation until the arrow moves to the keyboard part for the tone that you want to change. To cancel the split function, press the split button again. The function is cancelled when the L1 indicator turns off. To change the point at which the tones are split, Press and hold the split button until split point appears. While holding the split button down, press a key on the keyboard to specify that key as the split point. This is what the display looks like when C3 is specified as the split point. The note numbers for the split point are shown on the left side of the LCD. B2 and C3 are the names of the notes marking the split point. Press and hold the exit button to and set up. Next, we'll take a look at the layer function. The layer function allows you to play two different tones at once. To layer two different tones, Verify that the keyboard part indicator in the upper left part of the LCD area looks like this. This display with the arrow on U1 indicates the tone of the upper one part. Now press upper layer. The U2 indicator lights up and at the same time the arrow moves to the right of U2. You can now select the tone to assign to the upper two part. To cancel the layer settings, press the upper layer button again. By combining the split and layer functions, the keyboard is capable of producing performances that use up to four tones at the same time, with different tones assigned to each of the keyboard parts, upper one, lower one, upper two, and lower two. The status of the split and layer functions is shown by the keyboard part indicators in the upper left part of the LCD area. The keyboard parts that are lit up will produce sound. To use both the split and layer functions at the same time, specify the split settings first. To produce two different tones for the upper part, first press the upper layer button. To light up the U2 indicator, 
select the tone to assign to the upper two part. Next, to produce two different tones for the lower part, press and hold upper layer until the L2 indicator lights up. At this time, the lower layer indicator on the left side of the LCD area lights up. Select the tone to assign to the lower two part. Now, let's take a look at the octave shift function. You can use the octave shift function to shift the register of the keyboard one octave at a time. You can specify settings separately for each of the keyboard parts upper 1, lower 1, upper 2, and lower 2. You can also specify which octave to shift for each of the different parts to set the octave for each part, press the octave button. The shift amount is expressed by a number from the left, with 0 indicating no change, 1 meaning 1 octave up, and minus 1 meaning 1 octave down. The rightmost part indicates the keyboard part and the fact that octave shift settings are in progress. Use the plus and minus buttons in the numeric keypad area to specify the shift amount for the specified part. Repeat this procedure to specify the shift amount for each part. To end the operation, press exit in the numeric keypad area. Next, we will introduce the pitch band wheel function. You can use the pitch band wheel function to smoothly bend the pitch up or down for the notes that are being produced by the keys currently being held down. <laughs> By holding down the keys with your right hand, like this, you can use the pitch bend wheel with your left hand to raise or lower the pitch. The notes change to a greater degree depending on how much you move the wheel. For details about the pitch bending range, see Chapter 7. Next, we will introduce the touch response function. The range of expression available to a player during a performance can be achieved through different volumes that change according to how hard or how quickly the player touches the keys. This setting adjusts the sensitivity of this function. There are four options for the touch response function sensitivity. Off. Light normal, and heavy. First, press the function button. Use the left arrow or right arrow in the numeric keypad area. To display touch, and then change the set value. 01 means that the sensitivity is set to off. With this setting, the volume is fixed regardless of how hard the player strikes the key. 0 02 means that the sensitivity is set to light. Meaning that louder sounds are produced even when the keys are played softly. 0 03 means that the sensitivity is set to normal. The standard setting. 0 4 means that the sensitivity is set to heavy, indicating that the player must use force on the keys to produce louder sounds. 
press and hold the exit button to end setup. Next, we'll take a look at the sustain function. To enable this function, press the sustain button. The sustain indicator lights up. To cancel this function, press the sustain button again. The indicator turns off. Now let's take a look at the portamento function. To enable this function, press the portament button. The portament indicator lights up. To cancel this function, Press the portament button again. The indicator turns off. Next, we'll take a look at the metronome function. To set the beat for the metronome, you can set both the numerator and the denominator of the beat. Press and hold the metronome button and verify that beat number appears on the LCD. Use the plus and minus buttons in the numeric keypad area or the jog dial to specify the numerator of the beat as a value from 0 to 16. Next, use the left arrow or right arrow in the numeric keypad area to change the display to beat denominator and then Use the plus and minus buttons to set the beat denominator. Press the exit button in the numeric keypad area to return to the original setting. Next, press the tempo button up or down to set the tempo. There are two ways to change the tempo. You can specify a value for the number of beats per minute or you can press the tap tempo button two or more times to set the tempo based on the interval between button presses. Press the metronome button to start the metronome sound. You can check the measure and beat after the metronome begins in the upper right part of the LCD area. To stop the metronome, press the metronome button again. Next, we'll take a look at the registration function. You can use the registration function to save various settings such as tones, rhythms, transpositions, splits, octave shifts, and touch response settings. This is a convenient function when you want to be able to recall the saved settings as necessary, such as whenever you perform a particular song. To save settings, first press the bank button. The text bank and the currently selected bank number appear in the LCD area. While this is displayed, you can change the bank number by pressing the bank button. Next, press and hold the store button. And then press one of the registration buttons from 1 through 8. This selects the area in which settings are saved. When you press these two buttons, the current keyboard settings are saved to the specified bank and area. To recall the saved settings, first press the bank button. And then select the bank containing the settings that you want to recall. Next, press the registration button for the saved settings and then select the area containing the settings that you want to recall.
Keyboard settings, such as tones and rhythms, will change automatically according to the settings that are called in this way.